The halls of the Minnesota State Capitol are lined with portraits of governors and other notable citizens. Its chambers feature heroic scenes of the Civil War, painted by some of America's greatest artists. There is, however, only a single painting depicting the U.S.-Dakota War in the building, hanging in a legislative conference room. Painted by Anton Gogg, it depicts the attack on New Ulm in August 1862. His interest in Indians, strengthened by the history of his adopted hometown, led Gogg to go to great lengths to create an authentic depiction of the events. He did a lot of research. Uh, the first thing we know about for sure was an 1887 research trip to St. Paul, and he was investigating at the Minnesota Historical Society about the Dakota conflict. And I think he was doing that, he was spurred by a reunion of the uh, 1862 defenders that took place in 1885 in New Ulm. And uh, that was a big thing. Uh, many, uh, all the survivors from New Ulm uh, were there, and but they also invited survivors from the St. Peter Company and the Lesseur Company, people from Mankato, even the defenders of Fort Ridgely. So it was an effort to get all of the settlers and survivors back together, and, and it lasted for two days. And one of the people involved was Julius Burnt, who was, uh, by 1887, Anton Gogg's father-in-law. And he was a very influential citizen in New Ulm. He was an architect. And it would seem that uh, he uh, got Anton Gogg interested in doing some large-scale works on the Dakota conflict. So he did research in St. Paul. He also uh, advertised in the paper. There were articles in the New Ulm Review calling on survivors to contact Anton Gogg. He said, it would be difficult for him to find you, but you can easily find him. So he interviewed those defenders. Interestingly, he also went to the Lower Sioux Reservation to paint portraits of the Indians. And according to one story, he did two portraits, uh, one for himself and then one for the sitter because that was the only kind of payment that they would accept. But it shows his interest in a realistic and uh, authentic view of the Indians. He also collected clothing and various artifacts that he took back and put in his studio. And his children later played with them. They really enjoyed dressing up as Indians. And in fact, so did Anton Gogg because he and friends of his would go camping and their photographs showing them dressed in Indian clothing and regalia, uh, posing and doing uh, their uh, three photographs show a wounded man, a scalping scene, and a battle scene. And they were staged for the purpose of Anton to use for his paintings. And uh, so, I, what's very interesting about his work on the Dakota conflict is the fact that not only did he do a great deal of research from the defender's point of view, but he also wanted to capture the Indian point of view as well. Most settlers thought of the Dakota as savages, and we read in the accounts of the battles by Frederick Fritchie and other uh, defenders whose uh, words were collected by L.A. Fritchie, Dr. Fritchie, in 1916, that uh, savage acts were attributed to the Indians, and of course the settlers feared them greatly. So Anton Gogg's interest in them and his visits to the reservation, his uh, play acting, his dramatizing for himself, um, Indian uh, battles and shows that he was interested in seeing them as human beings. And especially in this uh, painting, uh, which is called The Attack on New Ulm, which I believe was finished in 1893, the Indians occupied the foreground 
and they are the really uh, one third of the picture plane. What really strikes me is that they are not depicted as savages, all smeared with blue earth, <laughs> you know, the blue-green clay. Uh, they're shown as human beings, and they're shown as warriors. Uh, in person, this painting is so large that you can actually see what the defenders are doing too, and you can see that they're fighting bravely. You can see one wounded man, someone who's been shot in the temple and who's being borne away. You see a soldier handing out gunpowder. But the Indians are actually given, or shown in larger scale, and I can't help but think that one of Anton Gog's purposes was to show that these were human beings too, that they were being brave, but that they were also vulnerable. So you see men from two different cultures clashing together, as opposed to uh, savages massacring the defenseless white settlers. You're seeing two cultures, uh, and both sides have their nobility. But they're very real. Uh, this is not heightened, and uh, he's, uh, I think it's all very naturalistic. The painting is uh, not tremendously smooth. There's a lot of vigor, there are a lot of vigorous brush strokes, and um, it has a, a spontaneous quality about it that fits the event. Uh, but he doesn't use a lot of heightened uh, lighting. He has smoke from the fire. He has clouds in the sky. And these things add drama, but they're quite naturalistic because the accounts tell us that the Indians and then the settlers themselves did set buildings on fire. And a storm came up on August 19th, and that's one of the reasons that the battle ended late in the afternoon, because the uh, storm came and there was such a heavy downpour. And so these effects that are very dramatic are, in fact, uh, true to nature. If this is the same painting shown at the Chicago World's Fair, it was afterwards sold to a man in Mankato and whose name was Stahl. It hung in the Stahl house for a number of years and then was donated to the Minnesota Historical Society. Now, the Historical Society had quarters in the basement of the Capitol once it was finished, after 1905. And so that seems to be why the painting um, found itself in the state capitol, and it's been moved around the building quite a bit. At present, it's in a committee room, and uh, it can be seen at certain times.